All right, let's go to Samantha, the home place of Allison Chains in Seattle, Washington. What's up, Samantha? <laughs> Hi, Dr. D. Um, nothing much. How are you? <laughs> nothing much. Hey, listen, uh, we can have a moment here, but this weekend, my Astros defeated your Seattle they team. Did. They did, but that was a really good game, you know? It was... Um, I was it, actually at a wedding reception. I'm like, we've now had two baseball games. It was a masterpiece. That's what my daughter, she's like, nine plus nine. We had two baseball games, Dad. <laughs> and uh, I was I was more impressed with her math than I was any of those teams hitting. So, well done. Well done, Mariners. <laughs> Y'all represented Seattle well. All right, so what's up? Um, So, this is a follow-up call from about a year ago. Uh-oh. Uh, I think your team gave you a heads up. Oh, it sounded like... No, bring it, bring it. Let's do it. Either follow up calls are um, usually or so, one of two things: things have gotten incredible, and I got a new a new question, or things have driven off into the ditch. <laughs> and, off into the ditch. Ah, into okay. The ditch. What happened? What, 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 what's going on? So a year ago, I called you about my brother who um, was using methamphetamine for several years. Just kind of how to have healthy boundaries, but still have him in my life. Uh, and that was a really helpful call. But now things have changed to where I do not want him in my life, but I'm having a tough time handling that. What happened? Um, um, sorry. No, don't be sorry. You're good. Take a minute. Um, Take a minute. He was convicted of a crime uh, where he, thankfully it was a detective, but it was um, attempting luring of a minor. Mm -hmm. And, um, I have two young girls. I have a two and a three year old and I just can't have them in my life. And so, um, I, I mean, maybe it was a mistake. Maybe it wasn't, but I got a hold of all the online communications and read through them because, you know, my Oof. mom and his girlfriend were like, it's not that bad. It's not, you know, oh, this is all a setup. And I'm like, I, I don't believe you guys. And then. So I've seen it for myself and I know intuitively in my head, this is not a person I can have around my family, but. Nope. No, 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 no. Hold, really on, hold on. Hold on. Somebody along the way, possibly your mom communicated to you that your body was not to be trusted. I want you to hold on to that sentence. You just, you just put forth and to put a period at the end of it before you get to the butt intuitively i know this is a person i do not want around my kids period okay your body is worth being believed okay yes and i have a little girl too and i'm right there with you and so i guess i just I go through like bouts of anger and rage and then yep. like deep sadness. Yep. And I mean, it's kind of getting cyclical at this point that my husband's like, man, it's <laughs> like, what's going on in your head? And I'm like, I just <laughs> miss my brother. I'm sad. Yeah. Um, and then I keep reminding myself that my brother's someone that hurts children because mm -hmm. I'm also a prosecutor and I know the first time you get caught is not the first time. So it's really hard for me to grieve this loss of this whole family that I had envisioned um, with his daughters and my family. So it's just, I don't know how to deal with the anger and the rage and then the deep sadness. Or I don't know, maybe if I'm just right where I'm supposed to be. You're, um, you are right where you're supposed to be. And I hate to tell you that because where you are is really painful, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you're a prosecutor. They didn't talk about this part in law school, the part where you just sit in it and it hurts. Yeah. Because even behind it all and behind all the pain and the drug use and all that, it's your brother, man. And behind so all how that, do that's I your, communicate that, to that to him. Huh? Do I? Do I? I don't know. Do I tell him this is it? We're done. Uh, you know, it's just kind of, he's still, you know, sitting in jail awaiting sentencing. So it's. Here's I, the thing. Do I write him a letter? <laughs> uh, I would. 
I'd probably write them several and I probably wouldn't send the first two or three or four I wrote. But when you're processing rage and you're processing grief, I want you to think of it like this. You're in your house and your smoke alarm's going off so loud and you just need to get your bearings right so you can focus on where the fire is. Okay? And so when you write that thing down, let it rip, man. It's probably not even going to be coherent. And if it is, it's going to be rageful and ultimately not helpful except that it gets your rage out of your body onto paper and you can look at it and you can reread it and you can say things like, I don't hate you and wish you, hope you die. And Right? You see, you begin to parse it apart and you begin to demand evidence from it. Which parts of these are true? You can never be around my kids. You've burned that bridge to the ground. And that's a choice you made, not me. That's a choice you made, right? So you can begin to parse that stuff out. But right now, it just feels like everything's on fire. And it should be, yeah. man. Your brother hurts kids. You know, you know what I mean? Like it, it, yeah. it, it should be. Have you entered into Surrealville where you've thought about it so much and gotten so mad and had so many conversations that it almost becomes distant? Like it's not real anymore? Yeah, so I do keep telling my, because time has gone on. This happened last, like, you know, the initial arresting was about a year ago. And so because time passed, you kind of forget. And so then I have to remind myself, you know, especially now that he's sober in jail and he sounds different and he's going to get all these different treatments. But I'm like, this. Cool. I mean, honestly, maybe this sounds bad, but in my head, I'm like, I wish you would have killed someone. I could handle you having killed someone easier than you hurting a child. Yeah. And so I I, I'm like, it doesn't really matter what level of therapy you achieve. I can't have you in my life. And that's just really hard. I mean, that's so final. It is. And um, he made that choice, not you. You put up a boundary in response to his choices, but he has to own the choice he made. And you're just doing the next logical right thing that happens to hurt. And here's the deeper hurt. At some point, your parents are going to have to choose him or you. And it sounds like right now they're choosing him or he's become their cause him. or his, their guilt and shame over how, whatever happened, the addiction to this, to the, to the solicitation of minor, they're taking all of that on their shoulders. And so they are so thrilled by every new moment of sobriety and every new chip and every new therapeutic intervention because all of those are a road back to them feeling less burden and that's not what this is about this is about a guy who hurts girls little kids and you'll be damned if it's going to be one of yours right yeah I'm sorry. I'm sorry that Thanksgivings will look different and Christmases will look different and you'll be guilted for the next X number of years. And here's the other thing. These things have dominoes and there may come a moment when you got to, you got to remove your parents out of that conversation or another brother or sister, or you have to block his girlfriend. There are very, very few shoulds and have tos during grief. Grief as Kessler says, is like a fingerprint. It's unique to everybody. And so when your husband says, hey, what's going on in your head today? Just say, I'm heartbroken. I'm angry today. And the shoulds are, you have to eat and you got to sleep and you got to have human contact and you got to move your body, right? You got to do those things that keep your body functioning so that you have an opportunity to be well down the road. But right now is at that time. Whew. Yeah. How long is he going to go away for? Um, one to 10 years, um, which is, it's because he doesn't have a record, um, but he doesn't get sentenced till the 21st. What do you think it's going to be? I'm just more worried about, um, probably more around probably like the two year mark. I'm not so worried about the in custody part. I'm worried about what you just talked about, the aftermath when everyone sees, but he's getting better and 
you know, I'm a Christ lover and, you know, I'm all about redemption, but I, it's not at the expense of my family. And I'm, so, I, I'm all, I'm all about redemption and I'm also all about not getting bit twice. And yeah. redemption in this case might be that you meet him for coffee. Redemption in this case might be that, um, uh, you know, you, you show up to your mom's birthday party by yourself because they choose who they're going to invite. And when they say, we just want to see the grandkids, you say, great. As long as there's not a convicted child, um, uh, abuser or a child yeah. solicitor here, then the kids are welcome here. That's a choice y'all make. And you see how matter of fact I'm making it? That's the goal here. It's just very simple. Yes. I'm going to be I've around you guys. That understands. Do what? I have one, but my parents are divorced. One parent understands and the other doesn't. And, and the longer you, you try. It, Mike just have to set a boundary. Yeah. Yeah. The longer you try to convince that other person, the more exhausted and burned out you're going to get. This isn't That's a conversation. It's not. A, to trust my body. Yeah, trust your body. This isn't a conversation about more data. This isn't a conversation about more facts or more. Oh yeah, what about this? What about this? this? Is somebody's son, and they're choosing to focus on things that you're not focusing on, and you're choosing to focus on things they're not. Fo like this, this isn't a matter of I just need to convince you or argue you argue my position so well that you change your mind. It's never going to happen. So it's just stating boundaries clear. Yeah, if you choose to have him come over, then you're just choosing for your grandkids not to be here. You're probably choosing for me not to be here for a few years, but you're for sure choosing not to see your grandkids. That's all. Simple matter of fact. And then you go home and you weep bitterly because this isn't how it's supposed to be. Our family members aren't supposed to hurt kids. Our parents are supposed to look at situations no matter how painful they are and do the right thing and be honest and be whole. You can already imagine the future conversations you're going to have with your own daughters about your brother, which are scary. You already know part of my brother is me. If he's capable of, right, man, and then you go down that rabbit hole, this is grief. This is grief. The greatest gift you can give to your husband is to be honest and open and explain it to him. Here's what I feel. Here's what I'm working on. I'm going to give you permission to talk into my life if, if you see me not, not doing okay. But also be gentle and curious with me. Don't judge me. I'm working through it. I want things to be different, and right now they're just not. I'm so sorry, Sam. So, so sorry. Golly. <sighs> Thank you for loving your baby girls. They are, gr they, are, they are so lucky to have you as their mom.